next step, got to do the background. Well, here we go. This is the moment that I've been procrastinating on for a few days. Uh, the new airbrush. So I have no idea how well it's going to work on this. I just got it a week ago. I tried it out on a test strip. It doesn't put out as much paint as I thought it would, so it's going to take several coats, I believe, to get this done. So here we go. dry already up on the top, so here goes the second coat. The mixture on the paint that I'm using, believe it or not, is not airbrush paint. It's house paint, inside interior house paint. This is Glidden paint, and these little jars is like a whole pint. What you're paying for a pint, you can probably buy seven or eight of those small four ounce bottles of airbrush paint. So what I did is I just mixed this in with some airbrush medium and some airbrush reducer. Createx. Seems to work out okay. Oh yeah, and the airbrush. It's a trigger action airbrush. You pull it you pull it back for just a little bit of air and then you pull it all the way back and I'm not gonna do it because I'll spray paint over there and that will bring the paint out. There's a stop in the back here to stop your needle if you if you're want working on a long area and you don't want to get your hand uh, trigger too you know crazy and fatigued you just adjust the needle and it's a stop it's a creos airbrush it's an old a, a, a 0 0.5 needle in it and it's called uh, ps290 by creos c-r-e-o-s made in japan high quality materials in this baby i'm very happy with it it's doing a nice job too so I mixed up this paint a little while ago. I just used two colors. That's all I did. I'm trying to get this color, a terracotta color, that a lot of um, a lot of tiles are made from the terracotta. So that's what I'm thinking this was all about. So let's put another coat on. It's pretty yellow right now. I bend over, I look to see if there's any kind of sheen on there. There's a sheen, there's a possibility that it might run, but it's not doing that.
Well, as you can see, I got this whole thing all masked off again. Uh, we took the picture, as you saw, in that really fast thing that I snapped through there. I had this really nice orange background, terracotta background, and all the tiles and everything, and it all looked really good in this nice bright light I have in the studio. But once we brought it up into regular room light, it just was too bright, and it really didn't look good in that frame and in that mat. So I decided that, uh, well, we decided, Dory and I decided, uh, let's make the background darker so that that car just kind of pops out of there. Oh, okay, I want it to pop out of there. So I'm going to start using some of this gray that's in this sweatshirt and uh, I'm going to keep some of that orange color in it though and do some spackling with some different colors of blue, maybe purples and magentas and all kinds of little, a lot of colors in it. And uh, we're going to match the colors that are inside the painting too. I'm going to spackle that in there and see what that looks like. And forget the tiles. The tiles just got too busy. So come on along on this journey of this painting. Sometimes things like this happen, you know. Uh, many a times in my career have I looked at a painting and I thought to myself, it just doesn't look right. So it's time to fix it now before we frame it again. Come on along. Come on along, come on along, ba ba da ba ba da da. That's okay. Oh, a lot of you guys always ask me what kind of equipment do I use, and well, I have to tell you about what I'm going to be using now, and that's a Colgate toothbrush, and it's called the Firm, and that's what it looks like. So, come on along while I do some come speckling. On along, come on along, ba -ba -da -da -da. So I got the paint all mixed up. I used one of the containers that you could probably buy at your dollar store or um, over at the, uh, the Quickie Mart, over at the filling station there. That you put your microwave food in here, you buy it in this container, and hey, don't throw it away. Use it to mix up your paint. And my toothbrush. And I'm using some burnt umber right now from one of the local hobby stores so I know you guys like to know what I'm using so that's basically what I'm using so let's check this out oh I gotta turn some music on it's more fun the flick to the beat hang on I use my telephone all the music that I that I listen to is on my telephone now ah, how about some tropical music yeah tropical music there we go. Oh, I forgot to tell you what I added to this. I added a little water and a little flow troll. Throw, full, full throw. That's F O, no, F L O W. Troll. T R O L. Speaking of trolls, I better get busy. Now when you're doing this on a easel like me, which is 90 degrees vertical, you've got to be careful of runs, so be aware of that. I usually shake off the first part of it on my masking to make sure I don't have some great big clumps that are dripped down into the tape or into the masking. So while the birds are chirping, I see there are some runs. So I want to get my hair dryer, and I don't know what the brand of this hair dryer is. I'm sorry, but it's been around for a while. Oh, it's a Windmere 1625.
So it's really important to get your your paint dried with a hair dryer as soon as possible so it doesn't get down into that masking tape that you have or whatever you're using for masking. And speaking of that, I'm gonna this is a trick that I've been using for the last 30 years. And believe it or not, I use this tape completely as my masking tool on my old paintings before I found out about this transfer, vinyl transfer thing. And this is it. And I'm not getting any money from Scotch, but it's Scotch Transparent Removable Tape. And you can find this at any of your local hobby stores. But I've been, I, like I said, I use this for years. I just strips and strips and strips covering everything up. You can get in there with your X-Acto knife and do a nice cut, very sharp cut. So all around my masking tape, I have this Scotch transparent tape around there because, well, my eyes, as you can see, are not that good with these big glasses I've got. But I can see through this stuff. And there's another tape that, it's a no brand tape that I got on Amazon. It's kind of thick, it's a transfer tape also. I couldn't even tell you what it is because it has no name on it. And I can use that, but it's real thick, whereas this is not thick at all. It's very thin and you can actually feel the board that you're working on underneath it with this stuff. Okay, back to the music. just thought of something that is one of the things that I that I use as flow control a lot as my reducing agent and if I need to make something transparent use some flow control and sample on something on the outside rather than your painting to find out how transparent it really is it's something that professional painters use in wall painting to make their paint flow really nice that's what they call it flow control it's probably nothing but clear acrylic, I would think, but no. Voltro is a milky substance, but it dries clear. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and lighten it up. All right, here's another little trick. These covers that they have for these containers that you get, you know, you get your pineapple, whatever it is, and hey, they make great little pallets too, you know, and they're free after you eat your food. Don't throw them away. So I've got a little bit of flow troll and a little bit of white in here and a little bit of that brown, and I'm kind of making a very light color that we can just thin out enough to splatter on top of the dark brown that we just splattered on the painting. Check it out. Some of the big pieces right, right here. And don't forget, the closer you are, which in this case would be down here, the bigger the dots. So now you have to take this and you got to get from the big dots to the small dots. So you have to be very careful. And then you want to just start mixing your paint like you always do, but then putting it on your mask and looking at it. Ah, yeah, it looks good. All right. Sometimes your paint will splatter like it did right here. That's okay, you know, because we're going to be covering it up with some other colors. Don't worry about it. So this color is turned, that I mixed in with a little bit of brown and the flow troll and the white, has turned out to be sort of a grayish color, which is a good thing. So I'm going to put a little more flow troll in there. All 
right, that's pretty much it for that. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to put the hair dryer on a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll add another color. So after those light colors have dried, we're going to have to go back in with that brown and just make those things a little bit lighter. I'm using the smallest speckles that I possibly can. So you can see how easy it is to do all this spackling with a good old toothbrush that you can get at the dollar store, right? I don't want to add too much more so that's why you might want to have some rubber gloves okay then let this dry a little bit and I put the hair dryer on it and then come back all right so I'm back in the back room you've probably never seen this room but this is how I look at my paintings a little a bit of an icon so there's the painting let me zoom in on it and you're looking at this thing, this is masked off, and I've been working on this probably a couple of hours, having fun. All the colors that are in there are just a bunch of dots. There's no spraying involved in that at all. It's all a bunch of dots, as I showed you before, with just a little bit of that toothbrush. Everything that we see right now is a bunch of dots. Isn't that amazing? Dots, dots, dots. That's nice. this is picking up all that transparent tape. It looks like it is. Whoops. Something happened here. Oh, now. Oh. Yeah, that's supposed to be. That comes out. Yeah. That was the light. It scared me for a little bit there. thought I was lifting something else up. There it is. Dory likes it. I'm so glad that you did that. So glad, so glad, so glad. It really makes the focus come in where it should be on that hood ornament and the, the um, what's that thing? Headlamp and all that stuff. Well, it's a, I think that's a blinker on the side on the fender there. Well, yeah, that's a blinker, but then the headlamp and the horn. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for doing that. Yeah, I know yeah. I appreciate your work with the, the grid and everything like that, but it was kind of distracting. But you know what? The grid is still there, Dory. I can yeah, still see a little bit. The, little I can bit. still see the grid. The inference, yeah, of yeah. the two. So, hooray, Tom. Hooray, hooray. Hooray. It's very gray with all those colors in it, it oh but then you look closer and you can see the the blues the two different kinds of blues and the gold and the the uh uh what do you call them dark red but isn't it amazing with all the colors that i put in there if you're looking at it from a distance it looks gray i know but what's nice isn't that is great that... yeah i think that's gonna look good oh, yeah. Whoever buys this, if anybody would buy it, I think they're going to enjoy this. Oh, yeah, Get a so. black frame around it. And oh, yeah. Hooray. And who knows, it might end up in the museum, right? In the oh, Milwaukee Art Museum someday. Oh, 
who knows, who knows, who knows. And somebody's going to look at this thing and they're going to say, hey, look at this grid work underneath all that splattering. <laughs> well, yep, there yeah. is. <laughs> Thank you, babe. So after a whole entire month, maybe a little less than a month, it's finally done. The 1932 Lincoln is finally done. It's framed, matted, has a piece of plexi over top of it, it's signed, and it's ready to display. It's been a lot of work, but it's been a lot of learning experiences, but most of all it's been a lot of fun to do. All the stuff, all the all the things that are reflected in the chrome here, working on the Greyhound was so much fun. And then adding this, you'll have to get in close to see what that is, was a lot of fun too. Reflections in the body. And then finally the last thing, changing 18 hours worth of work because it just didn't look right. And putting in this pebbled background. Another thing you got to learn is you have to learn from your mistakes. Maybe the next time I do a painting it's not going to be like this. It'll be a whole lot faster. I'll have better idea what I have to do. But the whole thing is it's fun and that's what counts. It keeps me busy. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something and we'll catch you on the next painting. So long. <laughs>